Hello everyone, welcome back to uh, chapter 15-7, and in this chapter we're talking about cylindrical and spherical coordinates, and I think the idea is to hopefully just split this up into two videos. I might do three, uh, but let's just, the plan right now is just to do two videos, and if I feel the need to uh, create a third video, I'll do that uh, when it comes time to do so. But cylindrical and spherical coordinates, uh, the way we're going to approach this video then is the first one, I'm just going to do uh, cylindrical coordinates. And again, so this is the plug and jug series, so what I'm going to do then is just help you set up cylindrical coordinate problems. And the first problem we're going to take a look at is going to be, if my pen works, aha, uh -huh, uh, is 15-7, number 54. And what this is saying is that uh, find the volume of the region bounded below by the paraboloid. So below by the paraboloid, z is equal to uh, x squared plus y squared. Uh, laterally by the cylinder, laterally by the cylinder, x squared plus y squared is equal to 1. And then uh, above by uh, the paraboloid, z is equal to x squared plus y squared plus 1. All right, so what are cylindrical coordinates, right? Well, they're just triple coordinates, right? So, so when we have a triple integral dv, right, remember dv is equal to like dx, dy, dz, dy, dz, dx, blah, 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 right? What happens then is, uh, so this is Cartesian, in cylindrical coordinates, uh, essentially we'd make a polar substitution. So x becomes r cosine theta, y becomes r sine theta, and z, it just stays z, right? So it's, it's cylindrical, I want you to think of, as polar coordinates with a third dimension. That's z, okay? So that's all cylindrical coordinates are. And so when we try to find volume, right? That's what volume is in Cartesian. Um, in cylindrical, uh, it's going to be the triple integral of r dz dr d theta. And so again, you can switch these guys around. Very rarely will you do so. Um, usually this is going to be how you want to integrate the volume of a region. So above here then, we have uh, what we want to integrate. And so we need to set up some triple integral, right? R dz dr d theta. And so how do we do that? Well, so dz is gonna be my interior integral, right? dz is on the inside, okay? And that means this first integral on the inside is going to be z is equal to something and z is equal to something. So this is just following suit, right, um, with what we did before. And if we look up here by the equations given to us, we realize that, hey, we only have two z equations, right? We got one here and we got one here. So that makes it really easy, right? I can just go down here and I can plug in z equals uh, one of them, and then z equals the other one into the equation. So it's attempting to put, right, it's attempting to put x squared plus y squared here, and x squared plus y squared plus 1, which has to be bigger than x squared plus y squared. But why is that wrong? This is wrong. Do you see why? Well, hopefully filling that out gave it away, but essentially we don't have x's and y's. We only have r's and thetas, right, because we made this uh, substitution. So what we have to do instead is we have to kind of just rewrite all these guys um, in terms of x squared plus, in terms of r's and thetas. So z is equal to x squared plus y squared. That's really just r squared. And then z is equal to x squared plus y squared plus 1. Uh, that's really just uh, z is equal to r squared plus 1. And then this guy is actually just r squared is equal to 1, right? So uh, r squared equal to 1, which means r is equal to 1. So what does this mean? Well, that means z, then, I have to rewrite this. Um, we really want r squared uh, plus 1 as our top bound. And then for our bottom bound, we want z is equal to r squared, right? We need it in terms of r and theta, OK? So that's fine. And now what do we do? Uh, now we need to find our r bounds, right? And for our r bounds, we actually just turn back into the xy plane. So uh, for our r and theta bounds, right, we have to look at the xy plane because, look, r and theta only occur in the xy substitution, right? So when we go back to the xy plane, we, we have to be like, oh, what, what are we looking at? Well, we're essentially looking at this guy, 
we're looking at x squared plus y squared is equal to 1, right? Because we're bounded by the cylinder. Um, these guys are really, right, what's the equation? This equation is really z is equal to r squared. This equation is z is equal to r squared plus 1. And here, um, this is the only equation where we have x squared and y squared and no z's, right? Because we're going to be integrating the z away. Um, and so, so, okay, again, we look at x squared plus y squared is equal to 1 because we integrate the z away. Uh, and then we're looking at r and theta, which here only exists in the xy plane. So that's why we look at this guy. So x squared plus y squared is 1. Uh, what is that? Well, that's a circle with radius 1, right? That's pretty obvious. So uh, circle with radius 1. Uh, okay. And now we need to figure out, okay, what are our bounds on this guy? Well, it doesn't say any other, there's nothing else that would, that's restricting me from integrating along this entire circle, right? Because we're trying to find the volume inside. So in the xy plane, we want to find the area inside here and then essentially scale it up and down so that uh, we have a, a volume component, right? And so, yeah, uh, this is just your standard circle with radius one. So my r bound is going to be from zero to one and my d theta bound will go from zero to two pi. Right, because that's just how I find the circle. And again, that's in the xy plane. So yeah, not, not as difficult as you think it is. And so uh, for this problem, let's just do this integral for now. Uh, but I, I'm not gonna commentate too much on doing this integral. So we integrate dz, and now we get the double integral of two pi, zero, zero, one. And this becomes r times r squared plus one minus r squared, all right? Uh, dr d theta. Well, that's easy. That's just one. So now this is equal to the double integral from zero to one of zero to two pi of r dr d theta. Okay. And then uh, what is this? Well, this is then r squared over two, right? Zero to two pi. Yeah, r squared over two, evaluated from zero to one d theta, which is now uh, two pi uh, zero to two pi times uh, one half d theta, and this, then, if you integrate it, uh, you'll get pi as your answer. So that's going to be the volume of this figure right here. Uh, let's take a look at another example, then. 15, uh, 7, number 59. And this one's going to be a little harder, uh, just a little bit. And why is that? Well, it's because uh, it's not going to be as obvious um, what our x what, and y's are going to be. So. All right, so now uh, it's the volume of the region bounded above by z is equal to 5 minus x squared minus y squared. All right, so above by this. And then below by the paraboloid, um, z is equal to uh, 4x squared plus 4y squared. All right, and again, uh, we have some triple integral, right? z, uh, dr, dz, not z, r, dz, dr, d theta. All right. And again, uh, why are we converting into cylindrical? Uh, it's because, I guess I didn't really talk about that, right? Why am, why am I converting this guy into cylindrical coordinates? Uh, it's because we have x squareds and y squareds. And uh, if you have x squareds and y squareds, like here, and you have them here, and you have them here, right? But no z squareds, all right? No z squareds, that's when you use cylindrical coordinates, all right? Um, so essentially, if every shape that they give you is a cylinder or um, it can be a cylinder, it can be a paraboloid, anything but a sphere. If you have a sphere in your region or yeah, if you have a sphere in your region that uh, you have a volume that includes like some part of a sphere, you want to jump to spherical coordinates. But for cylindrical coordinates, you don't have to jump to spherical coordinates. So or for non-spherical regions, use cylindrical coordinates. That's what I'm trying to say. Okay, so again, this guy, right, we essentially have x squared plus y squared because this is really just five minus x squared plus y squared in disguise, right? Uh, and so, uh, yeah, so we wanna use cylindrical coordinates. And so how do we do that? Well, that's really just five minus r squared right there, right? And then this guy is, uh, well, four times x squared plus y squared, which is four r squared, right? So, okay, so uh, now I know what my z bounds are going to be, right? My z bounds below is, the, the problem tells me straight up below, it's going to be uh, this 4r squared, and above it's going to be 5 minus r squared. Cool. 
And uh, now, what the hell are my, uh, what are my r and theta bounds? And this one's a little tougher because I don't have another equation that straight up tells me what to use for my r and theta bounds. And so, if you think about it, right, what happens? Uh, if you have two paraboloids like this, uh, one below and one below, above, what's going to happen? Uh, and if you draw these paraboloids out, which you should know how to do because that was section 12.6, uh, you'll get like a cap here and then you'll get like a cap down here, right? And then they're just going to like meet, right? So it's going to be two caps that essentially meet on top of each other, right? So they're going to meet at some circle right here. And then, uh, yeah, and then up here, you got your upper bound, uh, your above bound, and down here, you got your below bound. So what you want to do then is you want to look at, to find your r and theta bounds, you want to look at the circle of intersection, all right? And so how do we find the circle of intersection? Um, we do that by setting uh, z is equal to each other, right? Because when the z coordinates equal to each other, then the caps are uh, at that lid. Part right here right and you can you can you can see that because here's the z-axis right and then uh, well here's the z-axis there's the x-axis here's the y-axis right and if they're equal to each other then you just take the z-coordinate and you the, the circle is in the x-y plane so okay um, so we need to solve for z and to do that uh, well we don't need to solve for z we need to let the z's be equal to each other so now you got 5 minus x squared minus y squared is equal to for x squared plus y squared. All right, and now solving here, this is what? This is five minus r squared is equal to four r squared, right? And then what? Then uh, you get five is, uh, five is equal to, five is equal to five r squared, and you get, oh, r squared is equal to one, which means r is equal to one. So at this intersection right here, this circle, it looks like r is equal to 1. All right, it looks like a circle with radius 1. Um, so that's that's how we figured out the r and theta bounds. So now we have a circle of radius 1. And yeah, well, what are we going to do? Well, I mean, we what would we do above the circle of radius 1? Your rays from the origin go from 0 to 1, right, for r. And then for theta, you go from 0 to 2 pi. And if you integrate this guy, uh, I'm not going to do it here because I already integrated something for you guys, but you should get 5 pi over 2. Okay, and so this these two were pretty simple um, problems. So these are like two simple problems you'll see. Uh, you'll get like cylinders or you'll get paraboloids. Um, you'll get cylinders and paraboloids or you'll just get paraboloids. Uh, and yeah, uh, you know, when you, uh, that's pretty much it for sphere uh, cylindrical coordinates you just need to know right what happens when you don't have an x squared and y squared equation by itself and then uh, what you do when you like when you have paraboloids like in this picture uh, right here so that's it for cylindrical coordinates not really bad and in the next video then we'll talk about spherical coordinates and how to set up spherical coordinate integrals